Was there ever a time, you know, because Vince is also acquiring a lot of talents across territories. So between that and these uh, television opportunities he's acquiring, was there ever a time when you yourself thought like, geez, maybe I ought to go see if I can work in New York? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, you know what? Uh, honestly, uh, neither Jack and I had any desire to go to New York. I mean, Jack was at approaching the end of his career and Jack wasn't really wanting to work anything. Jack kind of hung on that last year just to kind of help position me, you know, and, and because they knew I had a couple of years left, but you know, I, I like a lot of people kind of went to college. I had an exit plan coming in this business, man. I was 10 years. I was going to get out. I was going to finish my last year of college and be a teacher, a coach. You know, that, that was my lifelong ambition to be a, be a coach, a high school or college wrestling coach. And so I had that exit plan. I'd already been in business 15 or 16 years, whatever it was at that time. So I, but I saw guys leaving, you know, we're starting to lose a lot of guys. You know, we'd lost Sarge. We'd lost, uh, you know, several other guys that made the jump up there. But the one that really, really to me was the tipping point of the whole, whole, whole buyout deal. And Vince wasn't, wasn't coming in and, and buying these guys out of here, stealing these guys. He was offering them good money. And, you know, if guys, you know, like, like, guys up they burn you know what he stole all my talent but you know if you've been paying these guys right to begin with and treating them right and there's no way if you're if you're making good money on a territory where you're working four or five times a week that you're going to go and work a hundred days in a row for Vince McMahon unless no he's paying you the money so that was a day that's the reason guys were jumping to the Vince McMahon because he was not only giving them opportunity to be nationwide, but it's giving them that opportunity to make that huge money that they weren't making other places. So, but we, you know, as I was saying, the guys were going left and right, Hogan and all these guys were already up there. All of a sudden, when we lost Hot Rod Roddy Piper to Vince, that's when Jack and I were making a car ride somewhere. And Roddy had come to our, our hotel room uh, the night uh, uh, a couple of weeks before and that asked us not to tell anybody, but he had made his deal with Vince. And we started, because Roddy was hot in Georgia. He was our, our bread and butter in Georgia. And Georgia spawned off to Michigan, Ohio, and West Virginia, where we're selling out every two weeks, like clockwork. Roddy was also over in the Carolinas, where Jack and I were working steady. So that was that was another straw there that you know that that made that territory so phenomenal during that time frame there. If you go back to Starcade and look at the card, there are probably thirteen to fourteen Hall of WWE Hall of Famers on that Starcade card. Mm-hmm. And out of all those guys that left the Valentine, the Slaughter, the the one who left Roddy Popper was actually the tipping point. That's when Jack and I got in the car later and said, "Man, we we got to think of something. We we you know let let let." think of our exit plan let's think how we can get out of this this bill 